What's up, everybody? Coming in here with a deck guide for you. We are going to be looking at the move archetype today that is taking Marvel Snap by Storm in several different forms. So the cards that are really enabling this archetype to work, Angela, Silk, Craven, and Spider-Man, all combined together to make a really tight core of cards that give you a lot of power in a couple of lanes without giving you a ton of vulnerability to Shang-Chi, if that's something you need to avoid. And you're seeing a rise of mid-range strategies here in Snap as they continually keep buffing these more mid-range type cards. And I personally, I'm probably going to end up making a video on this because I'm so passionate about this. I love the direction they're going with card design and Snap. They're just enabling more strategies, which enables more things to be viable, which means things like Shang, things like Enchantress and stuff like that get a whole lot worse. And that's healthy for the game, right? It shouldn't be a, a case where you can just run certain tech cards against every deck and win. Uh, I've been saying for a long time that Shang is not the problem. Uh, Shang is a fine card, and, and you're seeing that now. Shang is not very good in the Marvel Snap metagame right now between these silky smooth decks that have been popularized by Lamy series and the, uh, the Absorbing Man Brood Patriot style lists that are starting to pop up as well, where they just make a lot of five to eight power cards that you just can't deal with. Now. Some tips to playing this deck. This deck is not a straightforward deck to play. You need to understand the synergies and the proper placement for things like Angela and Craven. You generally want to go really tall in one one lane with something like Angela and uh, Kitty to keep you to get you a lot of stats without giving you vulnerability to anything like Shang. But then you also want to have another lane available that you can use in order to Shang, in order to use your own tech cards, whatever that may be. This deck is capable of putting out some really powerful turns and really kind of locking your opponent out as things go along. So keep that in mind. One of the things that I really recommend doing with this deck is practicing quite a bit before you take it either what it is to ranked or into silver, gold, infinity conquest. You need to really have a comfortability with how to play with Silk, uh, where Jeff should be moving, where your Craven needs to go, what lanes you're trying to win, and what lanes are bad for you, etc. There's a lot of different things with this deck that are very important. If you're running one of these decks with Legion, you need to understand when, when is the right time to use him and stuff like that. Uh, there are two versions of this deck that I'm going to have posted here for you. One is the original Lamy series list, and the other is one that's been popularized by Safety Blade Snap. Uh, both of these are awesome people. I'll make sure and put their Twitter links in my uh, description so that y'all can go follow them if you aren't already. Probably already are, let's be real because uh, they're both just great creators. But the the Safety Blade one is the one I'm actually going to show you some footage for. One, because it's on the fancy new UI. Pog, let's go. Uh, and two, because it's just I think it's better right now in the metagame. So the this Smooth deck was kind of dominating for a little bit. It really didn't have many bad matchups, but people have started to understand how to beat it. And really, things like Shadow King, things that go a little bit taller, like the, uh, the Brood Surfer Absorbing Man decks, these are the types of things that you struggle with. So make sure you have a plan for those. The way I've found to beat them is to really just go a little bit taller in one lane and try and uh, try and win that one lane pretty commandingly. So that going into turn six, you can use or turn five, you can use your wave plus a, a magneto to mess up the other two lanes and hopefully win another lane that way. And this has worked pretty well for me. That is why I'm actually recommending the safety blade list for you today, as I do think it is better into the metagame. Though both of these lists are a little um, unfavored into that Brood Absorbing Man deck. Now, there are things you can do to beat that deck if you want. I'll go over real quick. If you are looking to beat the metagame right now, you should probably be running Shadow King. Shadow King is kind of a sleeper card. I think everybody really needs to have that in their deck. So make sure you're adding that to your deck. Shang is honestly not that good right now. So keep that in mind and try not to... Uh, Try not to build your gameplay too much around shanging them in a lane because a lot of times people just aren't playing those big cards. Like a lot of times people have learned that the most popular decks are running Shang, so they just they just don't worry about that. They just go tall with five to eight power cards, and then Shang is kind of a dead card. So make sure you're planning a way to win both lanes without using one of your tech cards. So a few tips uh, to play in this deck. Understand Silk. <laughs> it's very easy to forget her, especially going into the last turn. But the the order that you play your cards in the last couple turns is crucially important, especially if you have a Craven on board, because you want to maximize your chances of getting the Craven trigger. Silk will bounce to one of the open lanes after you play a card that, in the lane that she's in, you or your opponent. 
So that's the thing I think that really can mess people up is pay attention to priority. If you have priority, you're going to be the first one that gets the bounce silk around. If they have priority, they're going to get the bounce silk around first. So it's a lot harder to plan where you want the silk to end up. So my general rule of thumb is if I have priority, I play the cards in the order that I would. If everything goes perfectly, that's the way I want silk to go. So if you have, like, say, Craven in the middle and silk's on the right, you play something right first. Then you play something left first or left second to try and maximize her going mid. Obviously, this is contingent on what your game plan is to win. <laughs> so that might not always work out, but you should always start. If you want the highest likelihood of Silk ending up in, a, in the Craven lane, you should start by bouncing her. If you don't want her bouncing too much and you'd rather her end up in a very specific lane, it's generally best not to play something uh, on Silk until the last move. So just think about that. Uh, the other thing is, and when they have priority, and they're going to get the bounce of the silk first, I tend to play my cards in the order. The best way I can describe it is, if silk goes completely wrong, I'm playing my cards here. So if the silk bounces to the lane you don't want her in, that's where I generally play a card. You can also remember a very key thing is you can on turn six lock out a certain lane so that the silk uh, like. 100% bounces to the lane you want it to go to. And that's also a very viable strategy. So try and keep that in mind. If there's a lane you want her to end up in, just make sure that's not the last place you play your card. All right, don't make don't make the last card you play on turn six, the lane you don't want her to, or the lane you do want her to end up in, because then you're just, you're screwing yourself. It's just not going to work out. So keep that in mind. That's the biggest thing. Silk's the trickiest card to work with with this deck. I've been playing her since she came out. She's super fun and she's super powerful and she's super strong but you need to make sure that you're paying attention to where she might end up. Other than that, really this deck is about, you know, building your building a, up a strong lane that is really hard for your opponent to contest. So just one of the things that I always like to remind people is like Angela and Craven as two power eight or two cost eight power cards is totally fine. You don't need to go any bigger than that, all right? Two cost eight power cards is very good. So if that's where you need to stop, that's where you need to stop, right? You don't need to play into Shang, especially when you've got things like Silk that adds five more power. You've got Kitty that can get you five to seven power. Uh, you got all these other things that sort of work with you to help in that lane. Now, if you're running the Safety Blade version, you're obviously not going to have Kitty. And that's an important thing to keep in mind. You will have like something like maybe Nebula or something, other cards that you can put into that lane that'll help you get a little bit of extra power. You don't need to make yourself vulnerable to Shang. All right. Now, substitutions. This deck doesn't really have great substitutions. I would say if you don't have Jeff, this one, you can pretty safely run Nightcrawler. It's definitely worse, no doubt, because it's vulnerable to Killmonger. But it does give you that move utility that you need. Silk, there's not a replacement for. I, you, like, it's called the Silky Smooth Archetype. You, you can't play this without uh, Silk. All right, you gotta you gotta have silk legion. Like I said, some versions run legion. A lot, I, I think the 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 most recent Lamy list wasn't uh, even running legion. It was running vision. Uh, he's kind of gone back and forth on that. Either either card in that spot is totally fine. I mean, don't get me wrong. Legion is gonna win you some games you aren't gonna win otherwise. But it's not the end all be all. If you don't have it, there's definitely other things you can substitute in. And uh, if there's any other substitutions you want to know about, please feel free to ask in the comments. I'm happy to help. But I do tend to think those are the big ones that people will ask about. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out. I hope uh, these games that I'll show here after of the Safety Blade deck help. If you want to learn how to play the standards list, Lamy Series has just started his own YouTube channel. You should definitely go check out his videos of the archetype because you're going to learn a lot more from him than you could from me. He's a very good player. So thank you so much for hanging out, and I will, uh, I'll see you next time. Loving that, those gold uh, docking... Dock and Claw card back. That's a sweet one. All right, this Nebula is useless. I don't have armor or else I think this is a snap. All right, we got death. That's a big deal. Bro, you don't have to have all the stones every time, you know? Like, there's called variants. You, like, a lot of people don't draw them every game. Just saying.
Oh man, they have priority. So if they do play a three drop somewhere else, I'm not gonna get the Craven buff. Which is annoying. It's very annoying. Yep. Enough said, Bub. Opponent snapped. I kind of just yeah, I'm pretty sure if someone draws, I agree. Well, this this opponent does, so that's fine. I don't care about that. That's what they snapped over is the Killmonger on my Nebula? Really? Venom, yeah. Oh, come on, dude. That's the worst place for it to go. Fuck you. All right, go mid. Go mid. God damn. No, wait, it's fine. It's fine. We win, right? They can't move anything over, over big enough. We just arrow. Right? But they have priority, so if they Nimrod... They, or not Nimrod, if they Zola. No, we haven't seen Zola. That was the last opponent. Or is Magneto safer? No, it's got to be Arrow. Yep. Come on over here. Get over here. All right, Captain Marvel, do your job. Higher, further, faster, baby. Look at that. Claw crawling back from the depths. Let's go. That's how we do it. That's how you draw it up, chat. All the two drops, man. All right, my plan worked to perfection. Got four? Okay, so this is going to block their destroy turn. So we should definitely snap, but I'm not snapping yet. We'll snap at the end. Yeah, this is a snap. I just, look, if I snap before the turn's almost up, then they get to change their play. You gotta be smart about it. Gotta make sure they don't have time to change. Oh, snap. Got him! Oh! Oh, got him. Victory. Also, my big ass head is a little bit in the way. What you got? Bucky Barnes! Same deal, right? Why? This breed of the deck doesn't generally run uh, Shang. Do you think it's better to armor it over there? Why? Oh, because of Venom, right? Hmm. Just give him this. I still think I snap, right? Snap. 
And they probably won't, because I snap, they probably won't play on Bucky. I don't know, maybe they do. They did. Okay, that's fine. It's so awkward on the energy. I wish we had another two. This would be... Is it just better? It's more power. Uh, it's not necessarily. No, we just play this. Ooh, I play Snap too. I do reach. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yep, no Venom over here. Alright, do we need to worry about Galactus is the question. It would have to be left. Well, dude, no, I, uh, no, look, they had it, right? They had it, so they would have gone for it. They would have just gone X and Venom over here and then played other stuff over there. I think you were right. All right, oh, are we playing around Galactus? Because if we're playing around Galactus, it's just this. Or I guess it would be this, right? Or this. But I really want to get waved down. I feel like it's uh I feel like it's Galactus. That's not. Okay. No no. Yeah, we win, right? Yeah, we win. No matter what this is. I cannot believe they stayed for that. Are you insane? Are you insane? What? You know I have Arrow.